Let us discuss the basics of radio communication. How are radio waves generated? When a high-frequency alternating current passes through a conductor, a copper conductor, it generates radio waves, which are propagated into the air using an antenna. This process is demonstrated by the given figure. Generated radio waves have frequencies between 3 Hz and 300 GHz and are categorized as low frequency, high frequency, very high frequency, and ultra high frequency. As radio waves propagate into the atmosphere, it follows the properties of EM waves such as gain or constructive interference, loss or destructive interference, reflection, refraction, scattering, and absorption. As radio waves are generated by an antenna and they propagate in all directions as a straight line, similar to light. Light travels in a straight line. Radio waves travel at a velocity of 186 miles per second or 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second, same as the speed of light. And radio waves become weaker as they travel over a long distance. There are three ways on how radio waves propagate. First is surface mode for low frequency waves. This is the transfer or the transmission of radio waves from one continent or country to another or one place to another. Direct mode for high frequency waves. For instance, radio waves propagate from one building to another. And the last, ionos ionospheric mode for long distance high frequency waves wherein radio waves reach the ionosphere before it is reflected back to the Earth's surface. In order for the information to reach the receiver, it should be protected from obstructions. So the information is packed using a carrier EM wave. And this process is called modulation. So modulation is the process of adding information like voice to a carrier electromagnetic radio signal. This is how modulation takes place. So the information is packed using a carrier wave in order for it to safely reach the receiver. The illustration shows how modulation takes place. For instance, a picture signal, the wave you want to transmit, is combined to a carrier, a wave that can be transmitted. When you combine the picture signal and the carrier wave, you will produce a modulated signal, the actual wave that is transmitted into the atmosphere. There are two types of electromagnetic radio signal carrier, the amplitude modulated carrier or AM and the frequency modulated carrier or FM. As shown in the simulation, amplitude modulation varies in amplitude. So, the signal is transmitted by changing amplitude while frequency modulation is a carrier that changes in frequency. For AM, the signal is transmitted using large or small amplitude, while for FM, the signal is transmitted using high or low frequency. How is FM carrier wave added to a signal? This diagram shows the process. The sound signal in the microphone is converted into an electric image and enters 
the frequency modulator. The carrier wave that is generated will also enter the frequency modulator. After passing through the frequency modulator, a frequency modulated carrier wave that is sent and transmitted in the atmosphere will be released. This is similar to how an FM radio signal is transmitted. As radio waves are transmitted in the atmosphere, it may experience interruption and degradation. It may also experience signal attenuation, wherein a strong wave, when it passes through a medium, produces a weak wave. The table shows the similarities and differences between AM and FM. You may pause the video in order to read the content of the table. Emphasis is given that both AM and FM are used in analog and digital communication. Take note that AM has poorer sound quality compared to FM, but is cheaper and can be transmitted over long distances. This is why radio stations offering News broadcasting utilizes AM as their carrier wave so that the news can reach far places, while FM is less prone to interference than AM. However, FM signals are impacted by physical barriers. FM has greater sound quality. Since FM provides greater sound quality, music radio stations are using FM as their carrier wave. AM is more susceptible to noise, unlike FM, because noise affects amplitude. So when you listen to an AM station, you will hear the noise in the background, while when you listen to an FM station, the music that you hear is of good quality. How does radio transmission take place? How does a broadcasting station send signals for our favorite programs? First, sound and picture are converted into audio frequency or AF signal by microphone or video camera. High frequency radio waves, RF carriers, are produced in oscillator circuits. AF signal is combined with RF carrier to create a modulated RF carrier wave. This process is called modulation. Then, the modulated RF carrier waves are amplified and sent to transmitting antenna. Finally, the transmitting antenna sends out EM waves in all directions. As the antenna of the broadcasting station sends EM waves in all directions, the receiving antenna in our houses catches EM waves from the radio or TV station. Then, the modulated RF signals received by the receiving antenna as you tune in to a particular station pass through the detector or demodulator that separates AF and RF signals. This process is called demodulation wherein modulated signal enters a demodulator or detector and removes the carrier wave so that the modulated signal will be left. The AF signal is energized in an amplifier. The amplified AF signal is sent to the speaker or TV screen that converts the electronic signal back into sound or picture so we can now enjoy watching our favorite TV program. During a TV broadcast, a camera scans small regions of the picture and generates a set of signals describing each region in 1 over 30th of a second. A TV broadcast uses two carrier waves, AM for picture signals and FM for sound signals. Hopefully you learned from this video, the principles and processes involved when you watch your favorite TV program 
and you listen to your favorite song.